Hello everybody, this is Dave Osmond at Metastock. Thank you for joining the webinar today. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I just want to do a real quick microphone test again. If you wouldn't mind just typing a yes in the box there on your left, if you can hear my voice. Or if you need me to be a little louder, uh, please let me know so, while we, uh, so we can dial it in. Okay, great. Sounds like you can hear me just fine. Perfect. Well, we are recording the presentation today, so uh, if there's something you'd like to review uh, in this presentation later, it will be posted at our website, uh, or rather our YouTube channel, excuse me, at youtube.com slash metastock, where you can usually find all of our past webinar recordings. Um, today I'm really excited to introduce Andrew Abraham. Before I do that, I'd like to make sure I read our standard disclaimer. You've seen this before, and bear with me. For a moment, I need to read this down to you before we start. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Thank you. So let me give you a brief introduction to really uh, one of the great friends we have over here at Metastock. Andy Abraham uh, really, really knows his stuff. He's been managing futures and commodities since 1994. And one thing I really like about Andrew is that he's a very disciplined trader and everything he talks about in his presentations is about being disciplined and setting the right expectations, being patient and having a system uh, that works for you and I, I always love listening to him because he always seems to help me dial in what I'm doing in my trading. I think he hits some very serious and very important points uh, about holding your strategy and being disciplined and executing it. So with that, I will go ahead and turn the time over to a, uh, our good friend, Andrew Abraham. Go right ahead. Can everyone hear me? If you can just type in the box also, and then I'll, get, I'll say thank you to Dave for that warm introduction. So everybody hears me. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone very, very much for coming here. And um, my goal is to really help you become better traders. Let's let me jump over to my screen one second. Perfect. Okay. The topic that we're going to talk about is catching home run stocks. <clears throat> Before I start, I also I manage money professionally. I am a commodity trading advisor, so I also have to have my disclosure up here too. Even though we're only talking about stocks, just for one quick second, if you can just review it, that what I'm going to be talking about are hypothetical. I mean, there's more. This is for educational purposes only. None of it is aimed or directed for any personal advice. What David told you is I've been trading in the market since 1994. I am an active, well, I don't want to say active, but I'm active doing a lot of trading. I've been in the market since 94. I more position trade. I've seen all different scenarios from bull markets, bear markets. You want to call it peak oil. You want to call it the peak gold. I've seen all of that. I've seen the different rises of emotions. And really what my goal here tonight is to shed some light into some ideas that will help you become a better trader slash investor. I've written several books, The Bible of Trend Following, which you can find on Amazon. And what I did last time with Dave is, just for you attending, I gave, I gave away the book. If you want, The Bible of Compounding Money, where it's actually I wrote for my children, just email me and I'll send you the actual it's a PDF version. It's my pleasure to send it and to help you become better investors. This is my blog, my website blog, that I try to share very pertinent information to help you become better traders. It's trendfollowingmentor.com. Can I enlarge the slides? I'm not sure how to do that. Um, let me run through this, and then what I'll do is my whole screen will go to Metastock, because that's really what we're here for. And I've been a Metastock user since 1994. And th that's really, this is just a little bit of a slight introduction. 
This lecture or this, this short discussion, this hour discussion, isn't really about trading strategies. It's rather about how to succeed as a trader. And I think the key word here is observe what's around us. I call them home run stocks. It's almost like the Peter Lynch approach that he would go to the mall and basically look at the products that his children wanted. And <laughs> invariably, those are the products that would have these almost home run or 10 bagger stocks. And these, these ideas are always around us. The example, and you can show, put your hands up. How many of you actually use Netflix? Netflix is a prime example. Or Chip Alita. Or Priceline. Or Under Armour. Because many of these home run stocks or slash big winners are under our noses. And the real reality is you stand the potential once you develop a complete trading plan that fits your personality, time frame, and money in your, your actual portfolio, you have the ability to compound money, to compound your way to wealth, let's say. And really, it's a trend-following strategy that you can use with Metastock. But let me I want to really qualify something. There is no magic indicators, there's no magic system. Really what it's going to boil down to is a methodology that's based on, or a trading plan that's based on several things. What to buy, how much to buy, when to exit with a profit or a loss. This is what a trading plan is. Because the other reality, like the vast majority of you know, that it's very hard to trade. Very few people really make money or even put it another way, are consistently profitable. So there's really more to trading than just having a trading strategy, or a strategy, let's say. That's why so many people buy all these books. I talk to many traders because what I do is I do one-on-one -on -one consultations to help them build their trading plan. And one of the questions I kind of just put out there is, how many trading books do you have? And some guys have, you know, they have their bragging rights, but they have more than 100 books. Or how many courses or how many seminars, yet they haven't reached the trading success that they've really sought after. And the reality becomes a lot of the psychological aspects or the trading psychology of trading, which is a little bit, you know, out of the context of what I want to share with you tonight. But again, it's really, it comes down to this. It's almost accepting the uncertainty of trading, which many people have a, a very hard time doing. So, strategies don't make a good trader, believe it or not, because, you know, if you think about it, well, all these wonderful, marvelous indicators that you can have on Metastock or systems, you would tend to think that, you know, they would make people successful, but it's not. And really, true successful investing there's very few places you can really learn it. I mean, actually, the irony is my daughter majors in finance in university, and she has a course on investment theory, and I chuckle. I mean, it's just, it's not reality of how to compound money. So really what I want to say is there is no holy grail. The trading methodology or system has to match your personality, your time frame, as I'm going to say, and I'm going to show you, which is even you know part of this, that there's no perfect system or indicator. But the whole idea is letting go of trying to avoid losses because the key is they're going to happen. The key is that you need to keep them small, and that's what part of the trading plan is, and that's what I work with um, traders. But let's let's go to the main thing. What are we talking about here? We're talking about let's jump over to Metastock. We're talking about the stock market. So basically, I have very simple rules. What I want to do is I want to be in, let me, let me put this back a little bit. I want to be in the strongest stocks, in the strongest sectors, when the market is healthy. Is that a pretty valid point? And really, a lot of these times are these stocks that are all around us. These are products that we use all the time. But, you know, there's going to be times that you don't want to be invested because let's say, let's go to 2011. Let's get back here a little bit. There are times where the market gets very choppy and it's very tough because you don't know, you never really know how bad 
um, a market correction or pullback can be. A show of hands, how many of you have been trading since, let's get, go prior to 2003? You can just put up your hands real quick. I don't know if it's showing here or let's just see if it's here. Okay, it's not really showing, but let's go back. One sec. We'll just go back to here. The idea is like this. And if you want, again, I'm here to help you. What is my goal? My first rule is, can I be in the stock market? As you can see, I'm looking at the QQQs. There's an indicator, which the nice folks of Metastock gave me. Simple rules are very powerful, like Einstein said. Keep it simple, but not simpler. It works. What I do is very simple rule here. And again, there's no magic to this because you know what? There are going to be trades that don't work. But as a basic premise, I want to know when I can be invested in the stock market. So what I do is I use a 10-period exponential moving average. I use a 30-period exponential moving average and a 200-day exponential moving average. I combine that with, I want to see that in the last 100 days, that we move up at least 3.5%. And then what I have here is an indicator in Metastock that actually shows it. So I know at this point in, let's say, September 8, 2010, I should step up to the plate and I should start looking for the strongest stocks and the strongest sectors, which are ideas that are all around me, which we're going to get to. What I do is I want to see a confirmation between the QQQs as well as the spiders. Let me get that open and you'll see. And this isn't rocket science. Let's tighten it up a little bit. And what you can also see, and actually what I, you know, if you'd like, we can go and see the fact that you will have avoided all of the bear market of 2008. You didn't have to go through such a terrible, grueling period. I mean, in the periods that you exit, you have to get back in. You exit, you get back in. Again, nothing is perfect. But this keeps you in the game when there's nice, big moves like this. Takes you out when things look a little bit weak and puts you back in again. I consult hedge funds and some very big traders. And we always get into a lot of conversations. And it's almost a little philosophical conversation is, you know, can you really predict the market? And I'll say no, you can't. But you take it day by day and you, you basically you accept the fact of the uncertainty, you accept the, the risk on the trade, which you try to keep the risk low, and you put your chips on the table. But if you use a methodology as simple as this, you will be available for every bull market, you will avoid every bear market, but as I said before, there's nothing perfect. Here you got taken out. Well, guess what? You might have to get back in again. This is what trading is. This is what it's all about. So this is the general premise for the stock market. Can I be in the market? Should I be in the market? Because there's people that want to be in all the time. And there's the buy and hold people that really, let's say for the proverbial, got their heads handed to them in the last two bear markets. And let's, let's, let's say something here. Warren Buffett, who's the world's greatest investor, how many of you would really want to go through a 50% drawdown twice in 10 years. He did. You didn't have to using a simple idea like this. And again, I invite you, you can email me. I'll send you the formula. I think if we click on here, let's just do if I can do this. Let's see if it opens. Yeah, bingo. I'll email this to you. So just please, if I can help you with it, this is my goal is to help. Let me, let me say it like this. I had a mentor. And I was like the proverbial stone that water had to drip into it until it actually entered. So I was very fortunate to have someone teach me and mentor me. So this is my way of giving back. I mean, in all honesty, I had a miscommunication with Dave. 
<laughs> I got a phone call at around 1.30, 1 o'clock in the morning, and I couldn't figure out who it was. And he said, you know, we have a webinar. And I said, really? So I prepared everything, got it all set. And right now, my time, it's 3.13 3 in the morning. What is my goal is to help you become a better trader. So my first is you can email me, and I'll send you this indicator. This will tell you when to be in the market. A point in reference. You don't need to be in the market all the time. You want to be in the market when the market is at that day, which could be at this day or this day. It's a signal. You have to take the trade. And you say, yes, I have a green light to be in the market because there's more money to made on the upside or being long in the stock market than trying to go short in a bear market, which is very, very tough, as well as just being a buy and hold. So that's the first issue, green light. We want to be in the strongest stocks, the strongest sectors, when the market's healthy. And the other really important issue that I want to point out is the biggest moves and the safest moves, if there's such a word as safe, which you know I'll put as almost a misnomer, is when people don't believe that the market can go up. How many people really believed in 2009, let's say it was March of 2009, that the market, excuse me, that the market was healthy and the market was turning around. Very, very few. Most professional hedge funds, long and short guys, did not make the turn. You can outperform them with this simple, powerful indicator, which I will send you for free. So what we do is we want to be in the strongest stocks. What's super, super cool with Metastock, let me just close this one second. I have something coming up here, is I already did the report. It's called, a, I, I rank, let's say, the strongest stocks. I just did a very short ranking. And the idea is, first I'll show the report. And I'm listing the strongest stocks that are in my watch list, that are things that are, interesting to me that I think have new and innovative products. I think most of you have heard of Netflix, Facebook, Tesla, Under Armour, um, <laughs> Southwest Airlines, again, Coors. These are, these are things that are in our daily existence, Netflix and all of these. But what happens is I rank them because this is the things that I want to focus on the most. And I want to, I want to figure out well, okay, one, can it be in the market? Yes or no? Okay, yes, great. It's like this is a horse race. I don't want to just buy the S&P or the spiders or the QQQs. And there are people that I actually met with a family office uh, last week, and they said, first of all, they didn't believe you could, they call it time the market. I said, well, how about you protect yourself and you make yourself available when the market's healthy? And then after maybe a half hour, they kind of, the light bulb kind of turned on. And they said, well, okay, well, even if you could do that, why would I do that? Why not just buy the spiders or just buy the QQQs? Or guess what? I can buy the leveraged QQQs and the triple this or the bull this and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, actually, it was interesting. There was an article in Reuters from one of the directors of BlackRock talking about the triple leveraged uh, ETFs. How risky they are and <clears throat> and all the different uh, the synthetics on them so I said you know I, I, I you know what I'm a meat and potatoes guy I like going into things that I understand I know everyone has Netflix why would I want to be in Netflix yeah I get it it's something I could put my arms around it's not a biotech stock or a high-tech stock that I don't really understand and this is things that Again, they're around our daily existence. Facebook, Netflix, Under Armour, Tesla. So what I do here is I rank them. And let me show you the, ex the um, exploration. It's really simple. And again, these parameters are not magic. You can play with them in Metastock and test them. But what I really do is very simply is I look at a two-week, I look at a five-week, I look at a seven-week, of all of these stocks, of a, of a portfolio, I divide it by three, and I get a numerical number. I've identified 
the strongest stocks within the strongest well sectors. You can do sect you can do the same analogy by doing a sector, which Metastock gives you, to know what the strongest sectors are. <clears throat> and then you can buy the strongest stocks within those sectors just by this simple formula of ranking. And again, if you want, I can email it to you. You can email me. It's simple to get in touch with me. It's Andrew at trendfollowingmentor.com. That's Andrew at trendfollowingmentor.com. So let me let's do that. Let's close this. So we just discussed one is I'm going to review because I like being repetitious because as much as this is simple to me and it's part of my daily routine routine, and this is what it needs to become to you as a daily routine. I mean, I, I get questions afterwards. So again, first, can I be in the market or am I not in the market? Because I want to be long. I don't really want to be short. I don't want to be, because I never know how bad these things can get or how ugly they can get. So, okay, I have a green light. And what's interesting, let me go back to this one too. I want to see the QQQs and the spiders basically confirm each other. And I just had a signal which came in later, which you can see here, on the 13th to start going long. And here was another signal to go long that really didn't work, which you can, I can let me blow it up a little bit. You got in here, and then you exited this next day. So now we can close these, now that we get that. And then we're going to look at some of the, I'll call, let's say, the obvious stocks that are all around us. And what is the concept here? You need to know to build, again, a trading plan. And this is what I do. I work with hedge funds. I work with traders. I work with private traders, either hourly or I go on site, like next week I'm going to be in London, and help them build a plan that matches their personality. Because the whole concept, what everything that I've ever learned and done, is opinions don't matter. There were people that said the dollar is going to crash. There were people that said gold is going to 5000 People said that crude oil was going to $200 a barrel. If you use simple concepts as a trend follower, which could be as simple as moving averages, or as simple as, let's say, these donkey and breakouts, you will be able to stay in sync with the market. But that's not what's going to make you successful. You need to know again. You have to have a simple entry. You need to know what to buy. So we discussed it. You want to buy the strongest. Pretty, pretty you know, obvious. And then there comes a lot of psychology because what's fascinating, and I, I'll pull this up after. I want to get to my point here about how these stocks are around us, how the psychology of the greed and the fear and not accepting, let's say, the risk on a trade can be to the detriment of a trader. Let's, let's, use, let's, let's talk about Netflix for a second here. Let's kind of tighten this up a little bit. None of this is rocket science, okay? Basically, first rule, and again, this isn't meant for any one person. These are my type of rules that I teach to traders. First of all, you want to be above a 200-day moving average. You want to be in the strongest stocks. You want to be in things that you understand. So let's say like Netflix. And again, let me show you this. There's no magic um, parameters here. You can use any parameter you want. And the simple idea of a trend follower is you can use a moving average crossover like a golden cross. You can use a, the Dachian breakout, which just for argument's sake is this 21-day high, and then you're selling at the 10-day low maybe, or you could be following the moving average. So basically what's happening here is here's a stock. Let's say it's strong. The idea is I have a 21-day breakout. I'm above a 200-day moving average. I'm above a 50. You could take a shot, but you need to know where the trade doesn't work. And you want to be able to position size this because when the trade does work, you want to take advantage of it. So what is the idea here? Let's say it's just a simple rule. Everyone knows that Netflix. I mean, <laughs> it's so universal. So you have a break, you have a breakout here that it's above, 
you have it above, you can use, let's start with this one. You're above a 50 period moving average, you're above a 200. Okay. Your rule could be as simple as saying, I'm going to buy the breakout, and my stop could be a trailing 50 period exponential moving average, and you would exit here. So you had a signal here, which you would have been at 75, and you'd be exiting here at not bad, around the 170 range. Pretty awesome. Well, guess what? You have another signal here because you, you understand, let's say, Netflix. It breaks out. Let's say it was here, this bar. And again, your rule is saying if it takes out the 50 period exponential moving average, let's move it over a little bit. And what I mean, take it out. This is, this is the other thing that gets a little, little bit interesting. You can say it touches it. You can say it closes below it. Or you can even say that it closes 5% below it. But you have another move here, another great move potentially. You would have bought it here, signal it here. You possibly could have stayed in this trade and trend followed all the way to here. So you would have been buying. This gap up, which was probably on earnings at 219, and you're exiting at around 330. Simple rule. You're buying a 21 day exponential breakout, I'm mean, 21 day um, high. You can do a 50 day high. You can do, pick the number. There is no magic. And then you can just follow it. You can follow it with a moving average, let's say this 50 period um, exponential moving average. Or you can use an average true range that keeps you in and adjust it for volatility. This is how I trade. I use a breakout strategy in my trading for commodities. I first identify the strongest commodities. I rank them same exact way in Metastock. Bingo. I showed you. I will give you the indicator. Then what I do is. I don't look to sell one second goes below the 10 because you can get whipped around as you see here. My rule is I'm looking at an average true range to keep me in the trade. If it works, if I'm patient enough to stay with it. And if I get taken out, you know what? This is where the psychology comes. I have the mental fortitude to exit, let's say, and then take the next trade, which is right here. And then you know what? It wasn't overly profitable. It didn't work. But it doesn't have to work. So the universe for you as a stock trader is think about some of the stocks that you use in your daily existence. If you're using them, there's a lot of other people using them. I'll give you an example. There's Cured Coffee, GMCR. That is on, actually, we can, let's do it. We can pull it up. I'm not sure it's an O or a K, bear with me. Might have too much stuff open. Okay, here it goes, bingo. Let me just close this one second. Use the same analogy. Basically, what do I know about this? I know that, hey, I use Cure Coffee. I know that these little capsulates are kind of expensive. But you know what? Here's the same story again. This is in my daily existence. It's above, <clears throat> let's say, the 200 day moving average, the 50, the 200. Here, I'm looking for a reason to get in here. And then I have the patience to ride it. Look at this. And then I exit because it's taking out the 50, which you can see here. Go back in and ride it. I'm looking, actually, I'm looking to be in this again, which is right here. Here it is, you tip the trade, and then you'd be following with a 50 period exponential moving average or an average true range. Here at Coffee, think about just using common sense. Who's their competitor? I'm sure there's an espresso and all of this, but in the, in the, in the meantime, this is, a, this is a brand that everyone seems to know. It's like saying the same thing with, let's look at some other ones. We, sat, we talked about Netflix. 
Because really, again, what is the concept here? I'm trying to get you to build your watch list that you're looking for, you know, a trade. But the thing is here is that this is not your trading plan. Your trading plan, again, is what to buy, which is your, your watch list, how much to buy when you have a signal, and then really what to, when to get out when the trade doesn't work. And then you have all kinds of risk parameters, like how many positions do you have in your portfolio? How, what is your risk on a trade? Is it, is it you know, 40 basis points? Is it 50 basis points? Is it 1% of your account size? Those are the issues that will help you also. But let's talk about Facebook again. Okay. Here you didn't take the trade because you're below the moving averages if those are part of your rules. But you know what? Here it is. It's above the moving averages. Right here. You have it. Let's say you're following it with the 50 period moving average again. Okay. Well, guess what? You kind of get taken out. Let's, let's, you have a signal to get really tight. Tighten it up. You didn't take out the 50, but you took out the 50 here. Breakout. Exit. Guess what? You need to be disciplined enough to get back in. Who's the competitor of Facebook? It's unique. Or as Warren Buffett would say, it has a moat around it. Or again, it's in our daily life. How many people use Facebook? You think they're making some money? I would think they're making some money. And then you'd exit again. And then guess what? You buy it again here. But there's going to be a lot of trades that don't work. And they don't have to work. You got in here, and then you could have been, you would probably, you definitely had to be out here. So it was basically a scratch trade. But look what's happening here. You have another signal again, right here. And your risk is two against this, this, this 50 period exponential moving average. Let's do another one that's in our daily existence. Well, let me, let me go back. Let me just kind of interject real quick. This is one of the strongest stocks. Beta. I'm in Beta. I don't really know that much about it. All I know is it's a Chinese company that does something with cars. And I did this a little bit more technically, but it fits all the same rules again. I know it's the strongest out of my whole, whoa, my whole watch list. Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> and here's the signal. Bought it. And here's the 50 period, expon 50 period exponential moving average. It's moving up. Under Armour. I am, how do I say it? I'm a sports, I'm a sports nut. So I'm looking for reasons to get into this, let's say. And there's times, like here, you have a breakout, you're above the moving averages. Huge move. How many people don't know what Under Armour is? They have cool sneakers coming out. They, I mean, I go in the gym, it's probably half of the people wear Nike, maybe the other half wear Under Armour. So again, it's around us. It's in my watch list. Even though, again, this is a very rudimentary concept. And I teach in my course, you know, exactly how I trade. I do a breakout. I use the, the, the average to range to keep me in the trade. Then I keep my losses small. I'm risking a small percentage of my account size to see if the trade will work. But what I, again, I'm presenting the core concept here is all of these companies are around us and there's huge profits here. Even here, this is a big move. This is a big move, huge move. Here's another move. Let's pull up another one. Tesla. I mean, how many, who's the competitor of Tesla? I don't think there is anyone really. And let's say back here, you didn't even know what Tesla was, which I have to admit, I wasn't sure if I knew what Tesla was back in uh, April. But by here, I knew what Tesla was. And this was a nice move. 135 up to here. I'll take that. And then, guess what? It's below the moving averages, so I don't take it. But here it is. I take this trade right here. Takes out the moving average, kind of goes back up. And then it takes it out. You get exit here. And then we're waiting for another buy signal, which is, should be coming up really, really soon. Kors. I'm in Michael Kors. 
Why? It's one of my, it's one of the top rankers. What is Michael Kors? How do I know that? I have daughters. They tell me that Kors is cool. They tell me that it's affordable luxury. There's no difference from Kors or when they were littler going back when they wanted Crocs. You know, Crocs went from $15 to about $70, if I'm not mistaken. You just have to listen to your kids. How about the other thing I had to buy? Who knows what Uggs are? I said Ugg. Ugg is because they were $150 for a pair of shoes. That's a lot of money. Uggs are these boots that are owned was from a company called Deckers. That was another massive high flyer. So here again with Coors, have a signal. The market pulled back here, so that's why the trade didn't work. Right now it's above again everything. I have to take this trade. But what's interesting here, this trade here, and depending on your rule, if you close below the 50 period exponential moving average or percentage, you could have gotten taken out and had a small loss. And you'd have to buy again, which is the tough thing that a lot of people have issues doing. I have no issue buying something back that I understand. If you do an internet search on course, it's the most popular brand, online brand in the world. In the world. Well, guess what? If it's in the world, don't you think they're making money? So it's on my watch list, and then it's part of something I want to trade. This one, not that I know anything about, um, it's a biotech company. <laughs> what is interesting about it to me is Botox. I have to admit, I'm 51 years old, and my wife isn't going to hear this, but her and all her friends, and actually, the wives of all my friends, they're like Botox holics. And basically, you had a signal, you got taken out here. This was a nice trade. Bingo, right here. You had a buy signal if you're using this breakout strategy. You bought it at 130. Big move. You could be trailing it again with. Again, 50 period exponential moving average or a 30 period exponential moving average. It, there is no magic. And each of them have their benefits and their detriments. Or I personally prefer an average true range. But I'm just using common sense. Ideas that are around me that I understand. Let's do another one. Okay, here's someone corrected how I say this. Chipolita, chipopata, chipo, whatever it's called. All I know is they have awesome burritos. This stock, like I said before, is you don't really want to go short because things go to extremes and let's say you like their burritos and you know that this thing is really kicking and you have to be able to take share prices that it doesn't matter if it's a $50 share or a $150 share it doesn't matter it's too expensive or the PE is too high when we're tr when we're trading as trend followers and as technical analysts it doesn't mean anything you have a breakout trade so if it's a $150 trade, you're going to trade less shares as opposed to a $50 share. This is what I teach when I talk about position sizing. But you have this massive move here. Look at this. This is mind-boggling. Again, you'd be getting it at 153 and you get out in this range, 220. That's almost a 50% return. Not bad. Here's another trade. And you'd stay in, stay in until it closes below the 50 period exponential moving average. Not bad. And how about even this, this chunk? This is amazing. And this is something that's around us. And they have amazing burritos, by the way. So this doesn't have to be rocket science. Priceline. How many of you have booked a trip with Priceline? I book with Priceline. Very simple stuff. Here's a trade, and this is to show you that just because you've done this, this, the trade doesn't work. You would have gotten in here, and it closed below the 50, and it didn't work, so you take it, you're out. But this is what I started talking about is the trading psychology. That you have the wherewithal, the mental fortitude to take the next trade. And this next trade is a doozy. You went from 742, didn't take out the 50 period exponential moving average, some about here, and then closed above it that day. I mean, this is mind-boggling move. 
This is what trend following is about. Letting your winners run. Having a plan that you can follow, that you're patient, which Dave actually mentioned, that you're patient. And you didn't second guess yourself and you took this trade. You were consistent. And you were able to bank some serious money. This is what I teach. I teach you how to think. Not to, oh my God. This is like I was going to say about an Indian ETF that I have with um, someone that I'm, I'm mentoring. Basically, it went to 742. Or started at 742. My God. It went to 969. What do I do? Well, you follow your plan, your trading plan that, you know, that is written down as rules. And the reason people don't follow their trading plan is it's fear of giving back profits. It's the fear of losing money. You've got to disconnect all that fear and all that greed and basically realize that the only way you're going to make money is letting your profits run. And let me, let me clarify something. There's only four possibilities. Big losses. Well, I strongly suggest that you have an exit plan based on, again, preferably in my, what I teach is average true range trailing stops because it adjusts for the volatility. It, it takes out the average true range. You're out. Nothing to second guess. And I've had many, many clients that they don't adhere to their stops. They think it'll come back. And many times, most of the time, it doesn't. So you need to be consistent and follow your rules. And the other thing is, you have to trade small enough where you're risking a small percentage of your account size. Let's say you have a hundred thousand dollar account size. I don't suggest you trade take on any one trade more than one percent risk, where you're risking a thousand dollars. Actually, in my my accounts that I trade professionally as a money manager, I have. 40 basis points, I have 50 basis points, 60 basis points, and 75 basis points. That's it. Because I want to stay in the game. And it's tough. I can promise you it's tough because what's going to happen is, again, let, 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 let me qualify. You will have a series of losses that will shake you. It's not unthinkable to have 10 losses in a row. Because what's going to happen is four possibilities. You have to put in a stop if you want to stay in the game, a hard stop. So you avoid the big losses. Then the next reality is you're going to have a lot of small losses like here. There's no way to prevent them. If you think you're going to prevent them, you're deluding yourself. Then what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of small profits. These small losses and small profits offset each other. Then... If you're consistent with your trading plan and you follow it without trying to be greedy and, and having fear and you just let it go and you release yourself, you have this big profit potential with something that's so obvious to you. Price line. It can't be any more obvious. You know it's obvious by your ranking. You know it's obvious because it's the go-to company when you want to book a trip. Let's do another one. Oops, that's enough. That's enough. That's the end of the ones. Um, let's jump back to this screen. What I want to do is <clears throat> here. Let me just answer some real quick questions here. My email address, because again, what I'm offering you, my goal is to help you. Again, I'm up. It's 3:41 in the morning. Usually, I'm up at five in the morning doing my trading. Um, and the rationale is, I do my trading really early. Um, one second. One second. Give you uh, one second. Okay, so there's my email. That my goal is to help you. I had people help me. They taught me not a magical system because these entries and exits, guess what? That's not what's going to make you successful. What's going to make you successful is the way you think, the way that you follow a trading plan that has every contingency built in. And that you don't deviate it. And you stay in the, you stay in the, you know what? There's going to be periods that are very tough and you don't quit. Let me just answer some of these quick questions and then I'm open to answer all your questions. And I just want to review also here. My email is here on the left side. It's just andrew at trendfallingmentor.com. First of all, 
as I said, if you're interested, I will send you for free, just email me, this book, The Bible of Compounding Money. And what I've talked about is how I've done it. And I'll tell you this, it's not been easy. This is not a get rich quick. It's actually the irony is, and I think it's even the best way to say it is, David Drews, who learned, learned under Ed Sakota, wrote the foreword of my book here, The Bible of Trend Following. The foreword, which actually I pull out time to time, just to reinforce me, because again, this is trading is tough. And he says, you know what successful trading is? Getting knocked down and getting back up. Getting knocked down and getting back up. And he repeats that at least four or five times. Because it's very easy to quit. It's very easy to say, this doesn't work anymore. This trading plan stinks. Well, guess what? There's nothing perfect. I'll give you the next guess what. If you use a simple trend following method that is heavy handed with risk management filters, which I can teach you if you want, you can stay in the game and compound money. So the Bible of compounding money, just email me. I'll send you the PDF. It's on Amazon. It's like, I don't remember how much it is, but I'll send it to you for free. The other thing I want to say with why my email, which I think is, this is invaluable. And I appreciate that you're here listening. And again, my goal is to help you. Let me just show you this again, just to reiterate this. If you're not um, a Metastock user, you got to start. This is an awesome program. And plus, the support is awesome. They help me with this, this actual indicator, which will tell you when you should be in the stock market. And it's not rocket science. You are going to get whipped at times, but you're going to avoid the ugly bear markets. You know what? Let's do something. Let me just show you this one sec. Let's build it again. Let's go to 2006. Okay, let's go back here. Wow, during all this ugly period, <laughs> I was out. And here, it's a little bit, I'm not sure if the indicator is correct, because again, in order for the system to take a buy, the 10 period exponential has to be above the 30 exponential, and they have to be above the 30. It wasn't the case here. You would not have gone long here. These are not right signals. So you always look to make sure. Here, Yes, it was a whipsaw. They happened. But you would have exited this market, the stock market, from December 27, 2007. And you would have gotten in about here. You would have been smarter than Warren Buffett. You would not have had a 50% drawdown. So email me. If you have Metastock, then you have this indicator. And you become your own guru. So let me jump back to here so I can jump on to questions. Um, what are, uh, okay, what are Ed Sakota's entry and exit rules in the weekly bars? I really don't know his, his rules. Again, it doesn't matter what his rules are. They have to be your rules that match your personality, your time frame, your risk tolerance. Again, there are no magic actual um, numbers or parameters. Um, here, Miguel has a question. Let me see if there's more. What are the blue, horizontal blue lines in the last chart? Um, I'm not sure exactly which one he was referring to. Maybe you can just say that again on price line. Let's open it. One second. I'm not sure it's an O or a K. Let's just see. These. All I did was I just I, I, I arbitrarily drew these in. I wanted to see that these are new highs, new highs, new highs, new highs. So there's no rocket science again. And it doesn't have to be rocket science to be successful. Did I? Okay, thank you, Miguel. Um, is there any other questions at this point? Doesn't seem so. So what I want to do is I just want to jump on to one other thing real quick here is, first of all, and Dave will tell you about Metastock, but what I do is I'm available. This is more for like hedge funds and banks and that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit out of the realm. I do one-on-one -on -one consulting. 
And basically what I do is I offer you like a 15, 20, 30 minute free consultation to see if both of us realize that we can help each other, that I can help you to get to where you want to get to. It's basically we do them in advance. We do it through Skype. I have somewhat of a waiting list. So again, one-on-one, -on -one, I charge $200 an hour. It's at your pace. Whatever you need me to help you do, I can help you do. I also have a course that explains exactly how I trade. And again, it's not snake oil. It's not a $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 course. All it really is is really how I do it. And it's not perfect. There is no perfect. It doesn't exist. The only perfect is are the guys that sell you courses for several thousand dollars. Um, and again, my motivation is really just to help you become a better trader. So, whoops, let me go back to here. Um, oh, okay, can I talk about my mentoring program? Basically, I just did, but the idea is like this. We do it through Skype. It's by the hour. I don't watch the clock. You know, it's like we start at 3 o'clock or over at 4 o'clock. Like I spoke to, um, actually it was a gentleman in Albuquerque, he was a doctor. We went over a half hour, big deal. My goal is to help him, to help him do, do, you know, develop a trading plan that really makes sense. And again, if, you're not, if you don't have a trading plan, you should not be trading. Because if you're doing that, you're just gambling. That's what all this is. You need to know what to buy. And that was the context of this actual webinar. There's other webinars that I did with Dave that focused heavily on the psychology. And I invite you to look on his um, and the Metastock YouTube channel. I also have a channel on YouTube just under my name, Andrew Abraham, and trend following. There's all types of trading psychology ideas on there. And the, the cool thing is they're all free. And also on my blog on trendfollowingmentor.com, I try to put something up every day that is very useful, that will help you become a better trader. So if there's any other questions or any other thoughts, I'm here to answer them, or otherwise you can go back to Dave. Um, so let me, let me do the stop sharing. Oops. Um, All right. Dave, you take you so over? Much. Thank you so very much. We're so glad to have you in the room. Um, as usual, tremendous presentation, uh, really giving the what I call the nitty gritty of, of trading, and that is keeping your emotions in control. Uh, we appreciate that a lot. Definitely uh, send your email over to Andrew and get your free book. Um, if you do not have Metastock and you'd like to run a trial of Metastock so you can run with those indicators that Andrew's going to send out to you, you can subscribe to Metastock for free for, for a month by clicking on this link here, metastock.com slash trendmentor1. If you have any questions, you can certainly reach me at dave.osmond at metastock.com. And uh, again, thank you for joining us this evening. We'll see you uh, at our next webinar presentation coming up tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.